care. Okay, as the turkey's resting, we got all these beautiful pan, pan drippings. So we want to strain them out into a saucepan to make our gravy. This is actually natural juices. As you see, there's no, looks like this is all juice. There's no fat on it. Okay. Taking the, the natural juices out of the uh, baking pan. And what we want to do is, I used olive oil to make this turkey, so it's probably not going to have a lot of fat on it, but I want to get as much fat as I can off this these natural juices to make the gravy. So what I'm going to do is another water bath. So this is just ice and water in a bowl. And I'm going to pop the saucepan. And what's going to happen over time is that the fat is all going to come to the top as it cools. You just skim it off and you just want to keep the juice that's on the bottom. We're going to be fine. Just all the natural juices. It's congealing almost like a gelatin in the pan. I don't know if you can see, you can see that. This is all the good stuff. This is all the prime stuff you want. I've, I've worked in a lot of uh, uh, countries besides the United States, and we don't have the separators or anything, so we use just ice water, a saucepan, and this is just a, the poor man's way of getting it done so you don't have to buy anything extra. And it works, it just takes a little more time than the, uh, than the uh, gravy strainers would take. Okay. We've just taken it out of the bath, it's totally congealed. And as you see, there's no fat to skim off. So just doing it in olive oil, a real simple recipe with olive oil. We didn't need to have any fat on it, so it's not only really healthy, it's very low fat. Okay, we're bringing the, the, the natural juices up to a, a simmer, and a lot of people now would put butter in it. We're not going to because a lot of people can't really take all the fat that butter has. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring it up, and we're going to add a little water to this. This is probably approximately about a cup, so we're going to add maybe about a quarter cup of water. Just a little bit to water it out a little bit, not, not a whole lot. We're going to bring it to a boil. Once we bring it to a boil, we're going to add a tablespoon at a time of flour. Then we want to continuously stir it until it gets the right consistency or thickness that we would like. And you just do a tablespoon at a time until it gets there, how you want it. Or if you want this to uh, render a little bit more instead of just putting a quarter cup of water, you can still put a quarter cup of water in, but you also want to put, um, you can put chicken stock in. And I always tell people buy a good quality chicken stock because it tends to be very salty. So, um, or organic, uh, just a, a, deep, a good quality chicken stock, low sodium, if you can't find an organic one. Okay, so we've brought this up to a boil, so we're going to put a sieve over to sift your flour. And you want to do a tablespoon at a time. Get a whisk, and just whisk it up. You want to do this on about a medium, medium heat. Do another tablespoon here. That's probably going to do it, I bet you. Don't worry about any lumps or anything you get in because we're going to pass it through a sieve before we serve it anyway. So, and if it gets a little too thick, don't worry about it. Just add a little water to it. More water. So really, it's just, it's just like, like the well, oil and then the just some flour, right? Well, most people would do it a lot differently. See, see how it's bubbling. It's thickening. You can see it thicken before your eyes. Here. It's starting to bubble. You can tell that it's gotten thicker. I would say it's, a, for me, it's a perfect consistency. If you want it thicker, you can make it thicker, but I'm going to add a little, just a little more water to it. Just a little tap. Kind of get it. And this is just the natural juices, I tell you. No butter, no nothing. It's all been seasoned however you bake your turkey. You want to put just a like a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And if you have anybody in a low sodium diet or anything, I wouldn't add any more 
salt to it. I'll just leave it like that, but if you want a little more salt, you can add a little salt to it. It's done. That's it. See how thick it is? See how thick it is? Okay, now you want to put it in whatever container you're going to put it in. You want to run it through a sieve one more time to make sure there's no lumps in it. So even if you don't stir it enough or you miss, you can still save it here. There we go. Still save it. As you see, we did a perfect job. There's no lumps. So we did it perfect. We didn't have to do it. But in case you do ever get any lumps, you just pass it through a sieve and don't panic. It comes out. Which is perfect. Pepper adds a little tanginess to everything, and it just adds, a, it enhances the flavor. It's a lot like salt in a lot of ways, but without the sodium in it. It just gives you that little, uh, it's actually very high in, I forget what vitamin it, uh, vitamin it is, but it's supposed to be good for heart, people that have heart disease. So, black pepper, try to put it on everything, as far as that.